Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reclaim Your Voice podcast, where we get to set the stage for your voice to be at its fullest potential, its greatest potential. Uh, I'm O'Neill Gerald, and I'm here to help you to take your singing from unsure to unforgettable. We're here to give you the tools that you need to stop losing your voice, break your bad singing habits, and find your unique sound. Um, I, I haven't done this in a little while, so I wanted to kind of help to remember, help you to remember who this is for, and uh, help you to see if this is for you. Uh, this podcast is for you if you are singing every week but you're losing your voice after you finish this podcast for you is for you if you are trying to better your singing but you find yourself plateauing in your practice and not getting better this podcast is for you if you've always struggled with building your confidence in your own voice and aren't quite sure if you'll be able to hit the goals that you have for your music and this is really one uh this particular episode is really going to speak to that but this also this also this podcast is for you if you secretly believe that you can't sing um and i i i really like the co- the um I'm, I'm already jumping ahead i already like the um the the topic that we're getting into today because it's it's kind of something that was kind of bubbling on my heart for a little while um because i speak to a whole bunch of singers um on a daily basis and a lot of them have so many different stories of you know, whether they are not singing, whether they're having trouble um, in their more like in being able to understand their voice. But I find that a lot of if not most of the singers that I speak to, um, the, 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 the problem that I see the most is that these singers have problems in their confidence. And um, I, I it's funny because um, when we look at a lot of the people that we revere, all of the best singers that we revere, we tend to, especially as singers that are aspiring to uh, be in in the place that a lot of celebrities are, we just tend to lust after what they have and lust after the position. And we expect that all of our vocal issues will either go away when we get there or are getting to that level of success will mean that we that we have none of the issues that we are currently experiencing but just like the title is saying performance does not equal confidence and by that i mean being at this place where you are performing regularly you have um albums under your belt that is not the the mark of confidence. Confidence is something that starts long before you get to the stage and confidence is not is never something that comes as a result of the stage. And and so I'm I, and I'm going to speak a little bit into that with my five points. My first point about this is that many people use performance as the fuel that keeps them going because they have no inner fuel. Um I, and and it, it's funny because a lot of people think just like I was saying that um or or yeah, a lot of people think that the more that they perform, the more that they hear people cheering for them, the more that they're actually going to have the fuel to be able to continue to perform. And actually, you, you we hear it all the time. And I think I've spoken about this in a prior episode. But there's we hear a lot of the time with um, a lot of people that are celebrities and are singing for a living. You know, I just love the stage. I just love the energy that I get from the fans. <laughs> and whenever I hear that, I'm like, OK, that must be a really great experience. But I, I, I hear a a lot of people use the language that uh, that uh, uh, that is around the the uh, I guess that sounds something like uh, I live for the stage. I love the stage. This is where I'm supposed to be. And there's nothing wrong with the stage being where you're supposed to be. I think that a lot of people are called to the stage. But when it gets to the point where we're living for the affirmation of others, when we're living for the acclaim that we get from the stage or from the rush that we get from the stage, we're no longer be, be we're no longer being fueled from within. We're being fueled from on the out from the outside, from without. And the thing about being fueled from the outside is that you're never going to always be in the position where you can get your fuel, right? Um, just think about it like a car like uh, there's gas stations that are you know put up in different places uh in in your city or your town or wherever you're at so that people can refill their gas but gas stations aren't here there and everywhere like if you're on an i don't know uh if you're on a really long highway you know and and, in a gas station isn't for a few miles you know or kilometers if you're canadian like me or uh but um the the gas stations are everywhere the place that you get your fuel is not everywhere so um in the on the in-between 
if you're running out of fuel and you're not and there is no gas station that is nearby you're basically on your own and in 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 singing it's a lot of the same way when we feel get our fuel from the outside we if we get our fuel from the outside it's only a matter of time before our fuel drops and drops and drops. And God forbid, you know, what if the performances aren't happening as much? What if your album isn't coming out at like, like isn't coming up for a little while? People that live for that type of affirmation um, uh, find themselves confronting their own inner issues when their fuel is running out. And because they don't have an inner fuel system, because they don't have a positive singing philosophy, they are unable to rescue themselves when they are crumbling because of the insecurities that they're feeling. Right. And so um, like what I'm talking about in terms of performance, not equaling confidence, just because you stand on a stage. It does not mean that you have what it takes in order to sustain a singing career and to sustain a, a life of singing where you're constantly um, hearing yourself, whether it's make mistakes vocally or you're hearing yourself uh, having to learn pieces and, you know, really discover how you're supposed to sing something. You know, there's a like uh, it, it takes a lot of the skill, not just to sing, but to be able to upkeep your own heart and your soul in the ups and downs of singing, right? If you don't have that inner fuel, you're going to find yourself running out. And if you find yourself running out and there's no gas station or performance opportunity or recording opportunity nearby, you're going to find yourself crumbling. In fact, that brings me into my second point. Many of the people that we do see are on stage are actually some of the most insecure people. And I think I kind of talked about this a little bit before. Um, <laughs> we we like to think that the people that have the 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 perfect um what is it like the perfect um performance practice like they look amazing they sound amazing you know we and they're really well rehearsed we think that the people that that are in those experiences are completely perfect like they have no confidence issues um and you know when you think about it you probably think you know maybe beyonce has a few confidence issues but we have no idea how 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 human the people that we actually revere are right there like i and even like my case study really for this is really a woman named adrian houghton right she was formerly adrian bylone uh for those of you that you know kind of were into 2000s r&b you'll remember three at three lw for those of you that were into the disney channel and the family channel if you're canadian you know um uh the cheetah girls she was a part of all of that stuff and i remember watching an um and i remember watching a clip of her on her talk show the real um and she was talking about why she stopped singing because i realized wait a minute because 3lw and the cheetah girls cut, was kind of popping off in the 2000s but when it came from like 20 mm, like like probably like 2008 to maybe like 2013 around there adrian bylon just dropped off the radar when it came when it came to singing i was like in, in in fact when i saw her on the real that's the first time i saw her in a long while and there was this video that clip that they put up where she's answered literally answering the question um you know why adrian stopped singing why i stopped singing and i'm actually going to play a little bit of it for you because this this is really going to help us to 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 see you know what's actually going on here all right let's make sure that this is good all right here we go you have an amazing voice why are you hiding it from the world this is her talking why are right you now. not making music yeah. Yeah. This is a question that she's being asked right now. Oh, really? Mm hmm really. Um, one, I'm scared to fail. So I've had this solo album, people, that I've been saying is coming out for the last five years. Um, I'm scared to fail. I don't like the sound of my own voice. Mm. What? Wow. And that's honest. In 3LW, I probably enjoyed the music side more wow. because it was like R&B. It was more of my thing. But I felt like in Cheetah Girls, they praised the fact that I sounded so young. Mm. And as a 31-year-old woman, sometimes I hear myself recorded and I still think I sound really young. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm going to even stop it right there. And I and I really appreciative of the vulnerability that Adrian is showing here, because I think that it's really useful for a lot of you that are actually going through um, something similar, because a lot of the things that Adrian said, a lot of 
the time we would think that somebody that has been successful like she has in singing on so many different stages and sounding the way she does adrian houghton sounds amazing she, i i really love her voice like um but like uh, like with the way that she sounds you would think that she doesn't have any of these insecurities but for her she ended up having a period where those insecurities actually took a hold of her singing career where she, it took a really long time for her to get back into singing thankfully she now has a, a like she she did a christmas album that was all her, all that, that was her first solo project but it took a while for her to be able to get there right and i i i just need you guys to know like the people that we revere are not as invincible as we think they are and we the and and the stage has not made these people any more invincible in fact the stage has probably done more of a work of exposing what the the insecurities that already are there and you know when you don't have that inner fuel like i'm saying before it ends up like leaving your your um your singing career in shambles and your your love for singing in shambles because you're hitting against an emotional wall that is killing you, and either you're not you're you're not getting the help to actually um, address what what you're actually hitting. And I'm not just talking about you know just simply your mental health. That's a that's a even a different topic. But I'm just even think even talking about your your own perspective of your singing and your of your voice like you're hearing adrian talk about the fact that she she feels like as a 31 year old woman at the time that was like seven years ago um like as a 31 year old woman she felt that she sounded pretty young and you could even hear in her voice the 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 amount of disdain that she had for her own voice right like the, the like this, the stage is not going to help you to get over your own insecurities. It didn't help her, right? I'm thankful she found her help, right? But there's a lot of you that are stranded, right? And, 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 and that actually kind of leads me to my third point. The stage and fame has killed so many people because they didn't have the singing philosophy to withstand its pressure, right? Like there's so many people that um, like like so many wonderful voices and wonderful people that um, have either taken their own lives as the result of the pressures of being in the limelight and, you know, having to to sing and, you know, live it live vulnerably because, you know, there are so many eyes on them. Uh, there's people that have taken their own lives. There are people that have run their lives into the ground with um, substance abuse, uh, you know, with uh, poverty. There, there's so many different things that have killed people's lives. And I'm not even just talking about people that have died even in terms of, you know, physically dying. There's people whose lives have become a shell simply because the demand, because of the demand that the stage has had on them. A lot of people that I speak to feel like once they get to the stage, you know, that, with that being their dream, they're 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 going to be able to experience so much so many amazing things. But here's what I'm trying to say. The stage is much more of a glass house <laughs> rather than like 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 it, or rather like the your the stage is much more of a revealer than it is an empowerer like sure there's a level of empowerment that you get from the stage but if you don't have the right singing philosophy and the singing philosophy is the, is the word that i use for the reasons why you sing or the reasons why you don't sing is the a combination of the two uh, but if you don't have the right singing philosophy it'll break you man like it like it will really break you and that even leads to my fourth point which which I was talking about with the glass house without the right singing philosophy without the right uh, reasoning system that your brain is sending to your voice to say sing or don't sing right the, without the right singing philosophy your performance is a glass house right um uh, a lot of you may have heard of the the term of like you know a lot of you are throwing stones but your house is made out of glass <laughs> right uh, it's just to simply say that your own perspective of your singing and your own um your own um performance and your presentation of your own brand and of your artistry without the right singing philosophy that thing is a glass house and it takes one stone to allow that thing to completely shatter like completely and uh, like 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 there are so many people that i talk to so many people that i talk to that that 
they, they are living either in the shambles of that glass house or even the fear. Like, because like it, it's it's funny. A lot of people are uh, even aware of their own insecurities. Thankfully, a lot of people are aware. There's a lot of people that aren't aware. But for the people that are aware, they are living in the fear of having that glass house shattered and ending up in a place where they are unable to function because they lost the joy because they had a traumatic experience. And that traumatic experience may not have necessarily happened, but because of traumatic experiences in the past, and like they've built themselves up, but they built themselves up with glass. And they are just waiting to have a vulnerable moment that will actually take out their singing completely, right? Like, like I, 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 I need you to know, like performance is not the source of confidence that you think it is. It is a revealer and exposer of how you are actually doing in your singing philosophy. And without the right singing philosophy, you are, you're, you're just waiting for your career to be in shambles, which brings me to my last point. Like when performance is your fuel, when you live for the stage, when you live for recording now, now he, and, and, and caveat, it's, a, it's okay to enjoy those things. It's absolutely okay, okay to enjoy those things. I enjoy those things. But when those things are your fuel, when those things are your reason, you will only ever be happy. You, you only ever are happy when you are doing well, right? When you're doing well in your singing, when you hit the run, right? There is never any bliss in learning when you are allowing your performance to be your fuel. When you are living to only excel and do well, and you, it means that you can't draw any type of lesson or any type of value from experiences that aren't necessarily as positive. When you crack or when you are singing and, and you're actually trying to build your voice, you're trying to warm up, and it's not coming out the way that you want it to, it's it, it's robbing you of, of who of of uh, of that ha of that complete of that complete happiness like it's like you're only ever happy when you're a-okay and you're doing well right like uh, the right singing philosophy will energize you beyond when you are doing well right when you're learning when you're when you're master when you're in the stage of mastery i heard somebody call it their training arc <laughs> you can enjoy the training right but a lot of you aren't enjoying the training a lot of you aren't enjoying the journey you're not you don't feel empowered you don't feel um energized even though singing is what you love right and that's why i've literally like set aside time in my schedule to speak to those of you that are you know, you're you're not necessarily, you know, in in school, you know, trying to figure this thing out, but you've you've actually graduated, you know, and you're now in the professional world. And this is where you're where you're having trouble. You know, even a lot of you are working your nine to fives and you're afraid to actually even continue to do to do the singing that you know that you're called to because you are living in that glass house. Right. And that's why I've set aside time to actually speak with you. So if that is you, if you're at a stage where you're like, you know what, I am ready to finally sing and and actually sing with confidence, I want you to book a call with me at reclaimyourvoice.ca slash call and let's have a conversation because I don't want, I, I, like, I know I've, I've signed up for me in my life to help you guys to actually figure out, you know, where you need to be. And we can make this a conversation. We can actually talk about what it would be to actually have those next steps to you actually singing with confidence, right? And you being able to actually be a master over your own singing philosophy and not a slave to your insecurities, all right? So I, I'm, I'm glad that you were sitting with me and talking to me today. Shout out to Adrian Houghton slash Bylone. Like, uh, I, I really love like everything that, that you're doing right now. And she's actually like, you know, she's really killing it. She's singing a lot with her husband, Israel. Like, like I, I'm really glad for you and I'm thankful for your vulnerability and for everyone else. Definitely, definitely uh, stick around for uh, more episodes of the Reclaim Your Voice podcast. And um, 
let's let's be on that journey to reclaim your voice reclaiming my voice i'm o'neill gerald and um please subscribe to this channel uh like this podcast and you know follow this podcast on wherever you're listening to this podcast on spotify or apple Podcasts, wherever and i'll see you in another uh and i'll you'll hear me on the next podcast episode all right you guys take care bye